If I eat like my ancestors did, that's probably the healthiest, right? I mean, it's evolution, right? I hear this logic every single day. I mean, it's everywhere online. It's really, really tempting. I mean, if my ancestors ate something for millennia, then maybe we're adapted to it. Maybe it's natural. Don't get me wrong. There is some truth to it. For example, ultra processed foods, things like soda, candy, refined grains. They're problematic because we weren't built to process that stuff. Cavemen didn't have junk food. But then people take this logic and they try to extrapolate and they go too far. For example, there's this idea out there that our ancestors didn't eat whole grains. Things like oatmeal, barley, rice. So therefore, these things must be bad for us. First of all, the facts are just wrong. There's archaeological evidence that we've been eating whole grains for a long time. Barley for at least 20,000 years. Oats for 30,000. And sorghum, that's another grain, for at least 100,000 years. Now, our species, Homo sapiens, we're about 300,000 years old, give or take. So we've been eating whole grains for a large chunk of our existence, maybe even all along. Okay, so our ancestors did eat grains after all. But does that even matter? Not really, no. The health value of a food is not determined by whether cavemen had it. The fact that our ancestors ate something in the Stone Age doesn't tell us anything about the long-term health effects of eating this food for 60, 70, 80 years. Cavemen had tiny life expectancies compared to modern times. Our main causes of death, at least in the Western world, are things like heart disease, cancer, neurodegenerative disease like Alzheimer's, strokes. Cavemen didn't even make it to the ages where you got to start worrying about those diseases. So a diet that gets us through our 20s and 30s tells us nothing about our chances of making it to 90 and dodging a heart attack. Even if we had come up with whole grains yesterday, it still wouldn't matter. So our ancestors didn't eat whole grains, hypothetically speaking, right? So what? They also didn't take antibiotics when they had an infection. We make decisions based on risk-benefit analyses, on pros and cons, with the best information that we have, not based on a speculation from 100,000 years ago. Whole grains are consistently linked to lower risks of heart disease, cancer, diabetes, inflammation, and mortality. And according to the massive Global Burden of Disease study, not eating enough whole grains is one of the main causes of disease and death worldwide. So the risk-benefit analysis on whole grains is pretty darn clear. The best evidence we have strongly points to eating them. Now, we're talking about whole grains here. We're not talking white bread, white pasta, pizza, candy, pastries. We're talking barley and wheat and wild rice and quinoa. What if you're gluten intolerant? Well, then you want to stay away from wheat, barley, and rye, those three. Everything else, up for grabs. Another situation where this caveman fallacy gets misused is cavemen ate a lot of meat, so therefore it must be good for us. It's bad logic for all the reasons we just talked about. Some cavemen ate a lot of meat, some ate very little. It doesn't matter. The modern scientific evidence says we don't need meat. If we really want to eat it, we can have some. It's compatible with health. Ideally, go easy on the amounts, eat it here and there, not as a staple, not as a pillar of the diet. Ideally, we want to try to get most of our calories, including protein, from whole plants, regardless of what the Flintstones did. Bottom line, decide based on your preference, what you like to eat, or decide based on evidence, whatever floats your boat. But don't let anybody tell you that you have to eat XYZ because somebody waving a club was doing it 100,000 years ago. Who cares? That's not evolutionary science. It's just speculation. If anything, I'm biased in favor of evolutionary explanations. Like any biomedical scientist, evolution permeates every aspect of my work. I've published entire papers discussing it. Evolution is crucial, which is exactly why we don't throw it around when it doesn't make sense. At the end of the day, nutrition science is not that complicated when you eliminate the distractions, the noise. I don't make these videos to tell people what they can and cannot eat. I'm not a guru and I never want to be one. There's plenty of advice like that out there. Here's the list of foods you can have, and here's the list that's off limits. That's not me. What I think is really interesting and important is that we learn to reason for ourselves on this topic so we don't fall prey to bad advice and bad logic and end up hurting ourselves. You don't need to be a professional scientist to understand the basics and to be able to make reasonable and healthy decisions for yourself and for your family. I'll see you on the next one.